If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner and welcome to Ask the Doctor. This is our 11th season and it's great to be with you tonight. As you know, this program was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. It is more important than ever to become an informed patient, and we are here to bring you timely health discussions. For those who are new to the show, there are a few ways to get your questions in. One, you can call the live phone line. Two, you can visit our website, netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can submit questions and opinions via the forum. And the third way is through Twitter. To give you more of a chance of getting questions in, submit them via twitter.com, sending it to Net New York. That's twitter.com slash Net New York. For this episode, I have Dr. Placido Morano, Chief of Rheumatology at New York Methodist Hospital. Welcome. So for In the News, it was a very interesting week. And one story is a major breakthrough in cancer treatment. That is prostate cancer vaccine. And this is not only important because it prolongs the life of people with end-stage prostate cancer or far advanced prostate cancer, but it'll be the mechanism which we fight other cancers such as breast cancer and melanoma. And what it does is it teaches the patient's own white cells, the, the, the cells that kill cancer and other infection, to kill the cancer. And what you, the way you do that is you take the blood out of the patient and send it to a lab where they mix it with this new medication. And it, the new medication teaches the white cells to be more aggressive and to spot the cancer. You then inject the white cells back into the patient, and they go out and kill the cancer. And people are living now, 34% are still alive after three years. And these are people who had no hope prior to this. So anybody out there who knows someone with advanced prostate cancer, it's available now. Doctors may not know about it, so get your doctor to, to learn about it, ask questions. Next, there's another recall by Johnson & Johnson, and this is really a disgrace. Johnson & Johnson has their fourth or fifth recall in the last few months. And the problem is that the, the place did not have proper quality control in effect, according to the FDA. And actually, they're actually contemplating even criminal charges. So this is very serious. And we're talking about little kids, infants who are taking liquid medication, who, if they get a little bit too much, it might cause them to have an adverse reaction, to be sick. There are also little flecks in some of the raw material that they're using to make this medication. So they might be getting little metal flecks in their stomach. For adults, probably not going to bother us, but for little infants, it could be a problem. So it really must be meticulous control, and it's a good area to deal with generic drugs. The generic drugs are just as good, half the price probably, and in this case, even safer. So Johnson & Johnson has to get its act together, and in the meantime, you can use this as an opportunity to use the generic drugs, which are cheaper. The next topic, mammograms for women under 40. And we're not talking about routine mammograms starting at age 30 because that doesn't work. The breast is just too dense and you get a lot of what we call false positives. So we've had a lot of controversy over when to start mammograms. What I suggest is at age 35 you get your initial mammogram and that will serve as a baseline study so that when you get your next one at age 40, if there's any change, you can look back to age 35 and say, oh, here's a change. Or if there's no change, it might save you a procedure at that time. So the recommendation at age, my recommendation at age 35, a woman should get her first mammogram and then starting at age 40 every year. And we have the other one. I tried to get some sound effect. Um, fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you if? If you fall in love. If, I don't if, know. if you're young and hot. You're, you're, you're married good. <laughs> He's not just, he is just a pretty face, actually. But um, what, what this is getting to is how do you stay young? You know, how do you, going through, you know, we take all these medicines, vitamins, and so on, but what are the minor habits that can age you? And for disclosure, M MSNBC had this on their website. I thought it was kind of interesting. Number one, not getting enough sleep. It not only does it increase your blood pressure, chance of weight gain and diabetes, but you look old and more tired. And what is, what is the average sleep? What should people get? Well, it seems to be about seven to eight hours. And the way you can find out what your average sleep is, when you're well rested, turn the alarm clock off, go to sleep and see how many hours you sleep for. And that should be your target. So again, it's different for everyone, maybe six, seven or eight hours, but get enough sleep. Next, sweets abuse. You know how many uh, teaspoons of sugar? We have a day? About 30. 
35, can you believe that? 35 sugars. In a can of Coke, you have 10 teaspoons of sugar. And we don't think twice. Can you imagine if you put a teaspoon of sugar and did that 10 times, you'd be nauseous. And that's, that's what we're doing. We're giving it to the body, and it's adding calories, and it's, it's, it's taking, actually causing osteoporosis in some cases if it's colder. That's you know, thinning of the bones. So you've got to cut down. If you can cut down on just one Coke a day, you're going to send, you can, you can save a pound a week. So she used Diet Coke. Diet Coke would be an excellent alternative. Stress. We're all under stress. And st the stress hormone is cortisol, and it plays havoc with the body. It makes you get older. It gets you diabetes. Mm -hmm. Your skin begins to age. So I thought I'd teach. You know, you hear deep breathing. What is that really deep breathing? So I asked Dr. Morano if he would try and be like a guinea pig, a model for us here. So forcefully breathe out or exhale. And you can do this at home. Good. Through your nose. No, no. Don't, just listen. Okay, <laughs> forcefully breathe out. Okay, now, through your nose, breathe in slowly to the count of four. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to hold it for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now exhale forcefully to, for eight, for the count of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How do you feel? Lightheaded. See that? <laughs> hey, you forget about. You feel lightheaded, but you don't feel any stress. I don't feel no stress now. Okay. Now, if you, do that, if you do that at home for three cycles, three cycles of that, and um, we'll put that on the website. So if anybody didn't get it, but that is amazing. Came out with that yogi. Who would that? Yeah. Pretty good stuff. Okay. Next, sporadic exercise. How many times do we go to the gym and say, oh, "I'm going to work out"? You do two weeks worth, you lose a little weight, and then you don't go again for two months. That doesn't do you any good. It has to be continuous, moderate exercise. So if you walk 30 minutes every day, you're much better off than the guys mm -hmm. that go to the gym for two, two weeks. <coughs> Next, the iPod is too loud. The iPod is causing people to lose hearing. We just have the what? volume on too. Yeah, it just, <laughs> we, just, we just have the volume up too high, and it causes hearing loss. And one of the things that makes you feel old or look old is when you're, you're going, constantly going, what, what? And you, you know, so well, let's try and preserve the hearing. Number six, not being socially active. Seems a best friend is more associated with longevity than a close family member. So really? do you have, who's your best friend? My wife. Good answer. Okay. But if you have a best friend, it's very good. It protects against obesity and helps your immune system and also cuts down on depression and heart disease. Number seven, sporadic fruit and vegetable intake. And that's when people start taking three, they figure they're going to get all the fruit for the week and vegetables right. in one day. It doesn't work because the antioxidants, the good products, are short-lived. So they'll only stick around for part of the day, and then you don't have it for the rest of the week. Eight, and we're getting to the bottom of this list now, unsaturated fats. Not all fats are bad. We've talked about this in the past. The fats you get in, in certain nuts and in olive oil and so on, the unsaturated fats are very good. So you can get rid of the saturated fats, you know, the horrible fatty mm -hmm. foods that we right. put. Avoid the... Um, Go for the unsaturated fats. And less romance, which, you know, everybody, you're never too old for romance. It keeps you young, better immune system, and a lower cancer risk. So those are, those are nine things that can help you live longer, and it's not a big Romance with your deal. best friend, that's the romance best. If, you're, if it's your wife. So, uh, my name is Ralph is Rocky, so it doesn't work out very well. Okay, now, May 4th in history. Now, I don't know how many, I don't know if Dr. Morano's young enough or old enough to know this, but I remember 40 years ago, Kent State, being in college, right. and... It was a time, it was a bizarre time. People were taking over buildings, setting it on fire, throwing computers or typewriters out the window. The, the revolution was on, right? It was terrible, and four students were killed. But it was horrible. I mean, it was just the time when it was a bad period in our country. And I remember they sent the students home. You could take your grades as of May 4th and not take finals because they didn't want to have ch um, the students in the college anymore because it was such a disaster. Right. But I cannot believe 40 years ago. Where, where were you 40 years ago? I can't tell you. Can't you? <laughs> young child. Young child, yeah. Can you imagine? Uh, I mean, for those of you out there who are old enough to remember it, I'm sure it's astounding to you as it is to me 40 years have gone by. Finally, I've got to say hello to Monsignor Bennett, who made it on this beautiful night. But I think he, Monsignor says he got caught in a little storm we had a little bit before. But uh, thanks for coming, Monsignor. And I think you're going to like this quiz. Here's the quiz now. Get your pencils and pens ready, computers ready. This particular house is the second most popular American home in the United States that people visit. The first is the White House. What is the second? So again, the, most, the second most popular home in the United States that people visit, number one is the White House. This is from our puzzle master, Linda Lapitosa. So she, I think she came up with a good one this week. Huh. So what could, we're going to do is we're going to take a could short... Could you give him a, uh, a I'm going to give clue? a clue as we go on. If we don't get any... Yeah, yeah we're definitely going to give is clues. Is it in New York State? No. We're going to take a short break. <laughs> 
And when we come back, we're going to go right to the phones, where our topic's going to be rheumatology. But the beauty is now you can ask anything, because Dr. Morano and myself are going to answer the questions. 718-499-6101 or twitter.com slash netnewyork. We'll be right back. Don't go away. I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet, and for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are rheumatology, but anything that you have to say, we'll have open, open phone tonight. And uh, Dr. Morano, it's great to have you back. Thank you. And um, I know everybody loves, you know, rheumatology is such a big area and even gets into depression mm -hmm. and, and pain management Correct. and how to avoid getting hooked. So I, we'll be getting into those questions. But I want to see who's our first caller. As always, it's always quite a surprise to see who it would be. So let's see who's on line one. Hi, who is this, please? It's always quite a surprise to see who it would be. So let's see who's on Keeping it a surprise. Hello? Hello? Dr. Hi, who is this? Is this Maddie? Yeah. Maddie, we haven't heard from you for a while. What's been going on? Huh? We yeah. haven't heard from you. We haven't heard from you for a while. What's been going on? I don't know. <laughs> well, we're glad to hear you back. Is everything okay? Yeah. I just feel a little more tired. Yeah, Maddie has been having some pains in the joints and aches, actually. Yeah, some the knees. The knees. The knees you know. And Maddie's 85 years old, right? Yeah, thank God. Yeah, it could have been worse. It's interesting. People over age 70, a uh, majority of them do have yeah. osteoarthritis. And osteoarthritis, Maddie, is a uh, wear and tear of your joints. It takes a long time yeah. for them to uh, repair themselves mm -hmm. if they do. And little by little, you lose uh, the ability to uh, function well. The best thing for you to do, Maddie, is uh, try to exercise as much as possible. Uh, keep moving, keep stretching, and uh, you should come and see a rheumatologist. All right, Maddie? Exercise, do exercises? Yeah, get out and walk a little bit, Maddie. Go out and yeah, walk. walk. Water yeah. exercises are the best. Water yeah. exercises, Maddie, because you're weightless. And since you have to carry your weight on those knees, if you're in water, that's the best thing for you to do. Good luck. Thanks, Maddie. Good yeah. to hear from you. Be well. Let's go to now Joel. Hi, Joel. Oh, hi, Dr. Garner. Joel, what do you think of the new format, the one doctor format? I like it. It's a good thing you have Dr. Morano because uh, I have a, a very pertinent question, I think. Excellent. What's the question? But is it Mary Pickford's house? Mary Pickford's house. Is that the answer? Oh, oh, no, I didn't even know. You slipped that in. I would have had a drum roll. No, no, no. But no? it's a good answer. Mary Pickford's house is a good answer. It's a good answer. Okay, but it's not right. No, no, no. But I, okay. like, I like the thought process. Very good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, Dr. Morano, my aunt has uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and, and uh, they want to put her on something called Plaquenil. Plaquenil. What is that? And yeah. I just, I don't know, she's a little concerned. She heard some some things about it. Maybe it has some side effects. What do you think? Hmm. Well, Plaquenil is a drug that came out, uh, they were using it in World War II for malaria oh. and was found to have uh, excellent anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, it was used in autoimmune diseases. Uh, it could be used in lupus, mixed connective tissue disease, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and sarcoidosis. It's a pretty safe drug. Um, some people have to be careful. Uh, people who have a ge uh, genetic uh, G6PD deficiency, they have to be careful. And uh, you also should go for an eye exam. Those are the two uh, big problems with that drug. But it's one of the safest drugs we have in, uh, in rheumatology. So it's a pretty good drug. And it seems if they're, if they're offering her a placonal for rheumatoid arthritis, it, it sounds like she has mild rheumatoid arthritis as opposed to a moderate to severe type of arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. Or is because she's just scared to use any drug. Okay. So I hope that helps. All right, I like the new format. Okay, we'll, we'll probably drop it next week. Let's take your aunt. All right, thanks. thanks. Take care. Let's go now to Yvonne. Sometimes they say yes. aunt. Aunt. Brooklyn, yeah, we say aunt. Aunt. We always say aunt. Aunt. You, ever, you ever see a red aunt and a black aunt? There's two ants, two yeah. different colors. Yeah, it's the fiery ants. The fiery ants, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yvonne, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Hi, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. Sheepshead Bay? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if you could just talk a little louder so um, Dr. Morano can hear you. Okay. Thank um, you. I wanted to know if the answer is Buckingham Palace. Whoa, 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 whoa. We need to, we need, I need to, like a roll into this. Wait, now, wait a second. <laughs> we don't have a drum roll yet, but, oh. <laughs> okay, what's your answer? Buckingham Palace. No, no, no. Okay. No, no. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's It's up okay. there, though. It's in the top of the, it's in the top ten, but not, uh -huh. not quite there. Okay. What made you think of that? Um, my husband's, <laughs> yes, my husband's. It was, it was very the good. Husband. husband. <laughs> Didn't he mess you up with the husband? <laughs> Didn't he mess you up last week? Anyway, um, in, in 2006, I had fallen, and I fractured my left shoulder and my hip. And left shoulder and hip? And hip, mm-hmm. Ooh. And I had, I had, thank goodness, I had a wonderful surgeon. I had implants put in, um, synthesis 7.3 uh, millimeter screws and a proximal humerus plate in my left shoulder. Oh. And uh, they're stainless steel. So my question is, um, if I in the future have to go for an MRI, am I like 100% safe? Use, you know, with the, you know, because I know metal is very, you know, is um, an iffy question. I defer to you. I'm going to answer. Now, we do MRIs all the time when people have had these plates put in. Mm -hmm. There's a listing, actually, of those plates that we can use Correct. that we look before we do it. Right. Because we don't want to have any catastrophes. There have been terrible tragedies of people right, that go right. in. Right, right. But you, it should, I'm 99% sure that you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Where are you okay. going to have that done? I'm not going to have it done. I just I want to know if, I, if in the future I have to have an MRI. No, there should be no problem. Okay. The, the, other, the other issue with you is uh, do you have osteoporosis? Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm close to, I don't have it, but it's, um, I mean, I'm close to having it. You're close to having I'm it. A, you know, like, I, I don't have it, but, you know, I forgot what, you, you know, it's the, you know, it's close to it, but I don't have it exactly yet. All right, because the people who break their bones, they tend to have osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. And females are the ones who tend to have osteoporosis, especially when they go through menopause. Can I ask you, Yvonne? Um, what could Yvonne do, knowing that she's had this now, what should she be doing extra? She well, there, there are certain things that you should have had done. One of them is a DEXA study, a mm -hmm. dual energy x-ray absorptometry, which is a bone, a bone density test. Mm -hmm. And that tells us how, uh, you know, the grams per centimeter square. Archimedes, mm -hmm. remember him? Yes. Eureka. No. <laughs> that's not the answer. <laughs> that, that's the answer? No, yeah. no. Right. So, you know, you need to know how thick your bones are. And if, they're, if you have osteopenia or osteoporosis, you definitely need to be on medication as well as calcium and vitamin D right. on, a, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Are you mm -hmm. taking that? Yes, I am. Beautiful. I'm oh, taking calcium and vitamin D. I have the second part to my question. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. I also, then I fell again this year, okay, in October, and I sprained my lower back and my left knee. Uh, I didn't break anything. And the minute I, that my knee was sprained, like the minute I fell, like my knee started clicking, and and I have pain in my back. So the x-rays show just inflammation, you know, and a sprain, and I've been going to physical therapy about once a week since January, and it's helping me. I have the ultrasound and the stimulation, and I do you know, an exercise. Uh -huh. And um, I'm wondering if there's anything else, any other natural remedies or any tests that you think I should you know, be taking, because I still have pain, but it is getting better, but I'm just wondering if I should do anything further. So I, I understand now why you asked the first question, because uh, if you have continuous pain, they mm -hmm. might want to do an MRI mm -hmm. of the lumbar sacral yeah. spine to see what's going on, as well as the knee. Yes. People forget knees on x-rays, you can't see the meniscus. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not radio dense. Mm -hmm. uh, that means it doesn't show up on the x-ray when you, when you take an x-ray. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you might need an MRI to see if you tore the meniscus, as well as if you have a bulging or herniated disc in the back. Uh -huh. So th that's another thing that might be looked into. But you're, you seem to be having some a, a benefit with the therapy. Uh, yeah. And then there's other medications for inflammation as well as pain. Um, weight reduction also would help. Uh, and try to avoid falling because obviously you've fallen twice and it's caused you to have a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Good Yvonne, luck to you. Good luck okay. to you, Yvonne. Thank Thanks you for very calling. much. Thank you. Okay. Be well. Who are going to go to next now? Let's see. Why don't we go to Grace on four? Hi, Grace. Yes. It's, Grace, how are you? Yes, fine. Pretty are, good. Let me um, see if they can turn the volume up in here because I can't quite hear you. Is that better? Much better. Now you're talking. Okay. Where are you calling us from, Grace? Yeah, East Flappish. I I called once before I, and I'm, I thank you for the plaque finally that came 
for the answer for bookkeeping. Remember your um. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Where, where do you have the plaque? Uh, in my uh, living room, right next to a shadow box that has King Touch. Oh. <laughs> 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 I think highly of what you sent to me. No, we, we, there aren't many winners. If you, if you go throughout the city, there are only about 15 winners with that plaque. Oh, okay. Now, I'm going to take a stabbing guess. I don't know if I have the answer to All right, the let's take a deep breath. Breathe out. Okay, what do you think? Monticello. Oh, Monticello. Very good guess, close. but not the not answer. Not You're getting so close, though. I like that answer. That, that was a good <laughs> answer. A lot of people have guessed that in the studio here. I thought of a lighthouse, but I figured it has to be more important of a, of a better house. Yeah, yeah, no, the White House is the biggest one. Yeah. But anyway, do you have any, are you feeling well, or do you want us to help you no, with anything? No, I want to ask about my osteoarthritis that I have on both my knees. I am now going for injections called Suparts, Suparts. Getting injection in the... In well, right in my knee, I had two of them already. Right, there's usually a series of three. Uh, what happens is that as we get older, we, get, we develop this arthritis. And arthritis is basically the cartilage failing to repair itself in an adequate fashion, in an adequate degree, uh, that, in a normal time frame. And so uh, you also lose with time the viscous liquid that covers this cartilage. And what they try to do with this injection that you have, it's, it's a, an artificial uh, lubricant for the knee. Yeah, and is it like it, a gel? Is it supposed to be a gel? Yeah, it's a gelatinous type of material. It's very viscous. And they put it in the knee to act as uh, a protector uh, over the cartilage that you do have and over the bone. And for some people, especially early on, mm -hmm. it does have a, 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 a great benefit. Later on, uh, if you have severe osteoarthritis, the benefit is diminished. So it's something that we try because there are very few things that we could do for osteoarthritis. It is a disease that we do not have what they call a disease modifying drug yet. And that's what they're working on. And, and there's no cure for it other than joint replacement. Yeah, see, for pain, I was told I could take for pain, I was told to take, uh, I have Sulindac. Mm -hmm. Sulindac, 200 yeah. milligrams. I take it when absolutely necessary. That's good. S Sulindac is a non steroid anti inflammatory drug. Be careful with the medication because it can give you ulceration of your mm -hmm. stomach. People don't know they have an ulcer because it's a great pain medication. Well, what about an Advil? Wait a minute, I'm not done talking. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, so, it's, so it could give you an ulcer and you could leak blood. The only way to find out if you're leaking blood without going to a doctor is to look at your stool. If your stool is tarry, like, uh, you know, black, like a, black. Uh, black, very black, then you might be leaking blood from, from your stomach and not know it. And make sure your doctor uh, hears from you. Grace, thanks for calling. How old are you? 75. Beautiful, beautiful. Keep walking, okay? Yeah, that's my problem. I don't walk enough. Water exercise. Getting that water. All right, Grace, thanks a Thank lot. Thank you. Okay, what we're going to do now, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be talking again about rheumatology. The number is 718-499-6101. You can tweet the question at twitter.com slash netnewyork. And we'll have a surprise guest when we come back. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet. And for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. Hey, and welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are rheumatology. With, doc, with me, I have Dr. Placido Morano, a rheumatologist. And now, special guest, Dr. Anthony Muscatello of Internal Medicine, the dean at Methodist Hospital, <laughs> and a man who's been practicing medicine for 60 years. Well, I, I, I could give a take a year or two. Yeah, if you include um, the residency. And we were just one. talking about 
exercise and the benefits. Dr. Muscatello just did how many more miles? Four. Four mile walk. Yeah. You didn't have a time to take a shower, did you? Are you no, kidding? I, I know, I know. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, because it keeps you me alert. Me, it keeps you me alert. called me at 20 minutes to say, and it's 10 after 8 no, this, this, this man, no, really, is trained medicine in the days when there was much more reliance on physical exam and less reliance on all these tests that, that give you a lot of radiation. No and antibiotics. No antibiotics, or right, and in the beginning, I guess there were very few antibiotics available. No, the only thing we had were the sulfur drugs. And you trained at really one of the best institutions in the country, a downstate medical center, and you, you met there the top doctors in the field. And I remember you tell me how people would send patients to the city hospital because they said, oh, we didn't want to deal with them at the private, and you would look at each patient and say, this is not a dumping of a patient, this is a human being. Well, uh, they had no insurance in the other hospitals, really didn't have the type of facility that we had. Since we were attached to a medical school, we had uh, whatever was called critical care. We had, criti we had everything, and the other hospitals, they couldn't handle it, plus they didn't have insurance, so the other hospitals came to uh, our place, and unfortunately, they were so sick that many of them would die, and we were called the hospital of death yeah. because so yeah. many... We, and we were actually, we were the last frontier for medical care in Brooklyn. And I know you love teaching medical. He teaches medical residents, students all the time. They love to attend. I know my daughter found yours was the best class than she, that she went thanks, through. Thanks, Steve. Thank but you. anyway, thanks a lot. What are three, three tips? At the beginning of the show, I went over nine tips for living a long life that you would tell your patients three tips that they should follow to live a long life. Well, uh, the essential three tips would be uh, diet, exercise, and... Uh, what should I say, uh, uh, smiling. Smiling. There was a, an article recently uh, put out that showed that if you laugh, uh, your mm -hmm. immune system becomes much stronger than those who are depressed and, and don't laugh at all. So you got to be able to take things and laugh Beautiful. at it and enjoy life. We're going to smile now. Everybody got a good smile. Let's go to our busy <laughs> phone calls. And who are we going to go to first? We're going to go to David. Hi, David. Hey, Dr. David, um, how are you doing? I a, yeah, I got a question on my back. If I like sit down, I get like bad pain to the lower part. I can't quite hear you, David. I, I wish they talk a little Is bit louder. Is it better now? Yeah, now I hear you beautifully. All right, I can't sit down for a long time. I get like bad pain in the lower part of my back. Oh, you can't sit down for a long time. Is it in the back, in the, the tailbone? Yeah, right by the buttock. That's where the pain's at. So he's, he's getting pain in the buttock area and the tailbone. Does it go down the leg? Uh, a little bit, like not a lot. Does it go to the knee or all the way down to the foot? It actually, it doesn't go by down the leg, just that like, like lower part. That's oxygen. what I'm getting, like the most pain. Okay, I mean, I said that more than five low, minutes. We, we have low back, uh, this is a low back problem, obviously. And a low ba back problem, um, it could be m many reasons. Uh, in fact, I just came from the hospital, I have a patient with an osteomyelitis. Uh, with his infection in the back, and she couldn't sit for long, and she couldn't stand for long. In fact, she couldn't even walk. Uh, then they have, we have people who have low back sprains, chronic sprains. Uh, bulging discs are, is another problem. Uh, for someone like yourself, you definitely need to be examined. There are certain things that we do, we look for, neurological uh, findings, as well as muscle spasm, range of motion, et cetera, et cetera. So, you definitely need to uh, be examined in order for us to say what the possible causes are. And sometimes we use uh, other modalities such as x-rays, MRIs, EMGs, et cetera, et cetera. But Tony, let me ask, what if this is related to coccyx, coccydinia, pain of the tailbone? Coccydinia can occur spontaneously, or you could have a, a fractured coccyx. A lot of people fall. Did, you, did he fall? David, did you fall? Any injury? Uh, no, that's it. No, I just get this pain like quite often. If I How lay old down, you? it goes away. How old are you? Me, 42. 42. And then I was wondering, Dr. Uh, Muscatello, what about a cyst, a pyelonidal cyst? A pyelonidal cyst. Uh, you're not uh, asking him if he plays sports. He didn't play softball and slid into third base. <laughs> Are you a sportsman? No, I don't play no sports. Not, not like playing. that. Okay, because uh, sometimes they, people pay on the weekends. I have friends of mine that play softball. They're 60 and 70 years old, and they slide and... It's worth getting in, looked into because it could be one of the bone problems. Right. It could be a, an abscess in that definitely area. Definitely to be examined, definitely. David, thanks for the question. All right, uh, I'm going to go back to L&B Pizza. Oh, oh, you love that place, huh? Yeah, that place is pretty good. I'll save you a slice next time I go down there. 
I love that place. You know Spumoni Gardens? Yes. Do you Very remember good. what L and B stands for? What? That's a tough one. I don't know. It's the Luster Reader and Barbaretto or something. Those were the two, the husband and wife that started Spumoni Gardens. Larry, Great place. Larry and Barbara. Larry, <laughs> but you stay out there in the, in the summer evening, beautiful. it's outdoors, yeah. it's so beautiful, right? The ices are very good. The best ices yeah. in the city. Thanks a lot, David, appreciate it. Oh, you too, thanks Take bro. care. Hey, Charles, how you doing? Hello, Dr. Garner? Yeah, Charles, how are you? No, this is not Charles, this is Larry from Rockland County. Oh, oh, that's, that's an easy mistake, Charles, Larry. Yeah. They, always, they, they always make that back there. What yeah. can we do for you? Um, I, uh, I'd like to ask Dr. Morano a question, but uh, first, is, is it uh, the answer to your thing, uh, Mount Vernon? Oh, so close yet so far as the song goes. Okay, okay. But this is a tough one. We, we don't usually stump. You're the Larry from Rockland County. Yeah, that's correct. You, that's you've won actually before. Yes, yes. Yeah. But I just thought I'd throw that uh, Dr. in. Dr. Muscatella didn't hear the quiz. Right. Yeah. What's the most? Let me tell Dr. Muscatella the quiz, and then we. We'll, What's the second most visited house in the United States? The first most visited house is the White House. Don't so say that's anything. the question. Don't say anything. So you think about it in the meantime. <laughs> but um, what do you think? We have, a, we have a great guest, Dr. Muscatello, who just I, came. I, I, I see him, and uh, he looks absolutely great. Amazing. And he got down here on the spur of the moment just to be on the show. That's, that's, that's very kind, very Thank kind you. of him. So what's the question? My question is, um, I've been having some... Um, I take simvastatin, and I've been having a discomfort in my quads, in my legs. And um, I, I was, I was, I told this to a podiatrist, and he says it's probably the simvastatin you're taking. So he says you better have your urine checked. So I had my urine checked, and they did some kind of a, a liver exam, and he told me everything is fine. Now, how would you know whether or not? Um, you you have you're having a problem with your muscles with simvastatin. Like a Lipitor type yeah. drug. It, the statins have been found to cause a myopathy. Mm -hmm. That means it causes an inflammation in the muscles. And people, you know, at first when this medicine medicine came out, we were confused. What's going on? Mm -hmm. But we found that the statins can in, in select people, and we don't even know why in some people it does, and to other people it doesn't. Uh, they could get a breakdown in the muscle, and the test that we do is CPK levels. Mm -hmm. And the CPK levels are basically components of muscle that are liberated into the bloodstream, mm -hmm. and you measure it. And so by that measurement, you could tell if the statin is doing a problem uh, in the muscle. And what would be the normal range for a CPK? That, oh, that, CPK that would... CPKs, when you, when, when you measure CPKs, uh, you could go up to 200 uh, in the CPK and be within normal range. But once you start going over 300, 400, 500, right. uh, you, you're breaking down muscle. Uh, but some people have, you know, bodybuilders, they could have a CPK of 300 and something. Uh -huh. um, so you have to do the CPK. And the CPK is normal. You might want to look for other causes for quadricep muscle uh, aches. Like the muscatella. And sometimes, sometimes, I'm sorry for interjecting. Uh, sometimes that there might not be a CPK problem, uh, elevation, and what I would recommend is if your la doctor allows, is maybe putting the statin on hold for a month or two and uh, see if there is a difference. Okay. I, I was okay. asking Dr. Muscatel about statins like Lipitor, Zocor. Have you seen this problem with the patients with these muscle pains? It's not as common as you think, but uh, when this happened, then there was a lot of hallabaloo about it. The cardiologist says, what would you rather have, a heart attack and drop dead, or would you ha like to have some muscle uh. difficulty? So don't stop it unless the doctor tells you to stop okay, it. Okay, Larry, you heard it from Dr. Muscatello and Dr. Okay. Morano. Okay. And, and we I may have, have there may be an answer to the quiz coming up, so stay tuned. Okay, okay? I will, doctor. Thank you very, very much. Great to talk Good to you, Larry. My, my pleasure. Thanks. Thank you, doctors. Thank you. L loyal listener. Calls in. Watches on the computer. Very good. Calls in. Betty? Yeah. Hi, Betty. Hi. Where are you calling us from? Mill Basin. Mill Basin. You, you sound a little subdued. Subdued? And I, yeah, you said, <laughs> I think you might have the answer to the quiz, but I want you to, you know, we got to take in that deep breath. We're going to get a drum roll. Please. I have costochondritis. That's why I can't breathe. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah. Man. Don't take a deep Don't I, take I, a deep I, breath. I am. It's not <laughs> working. Now, let me see if I get that drum roll. It's not working. Okay. You don't hear the drum roll? Huh? You hear the drum roll? Do I have what? Yeah, I, I gotta turn this. We can try and keep it low. We want to disturb the, the, uh, the 
name. It's kind of a low drum roll. What is your answer? I was going to say Mount Vernon. George say it Washington. one more time. I can't hear. Mount, what should I do? Mount Vernon? Mount Vernon, George no, Washington's no, no. home. Didn't we have that guest before? Yeah, yeah, Larry said it. Larry guessed it before. But I, I appreciate the call. What do you like to eat at Mill Basin? Mill Basin Deli. Oh, that's what I right. love yeah, about you. Is. They're sending you food. How do you pronounce that, um, that artist that, that they have to work of? Uh, yeah, I know who you mean. I think E-R-T, Erte, is it? Erte, Erte. 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 But now he's yeah. got -E. different things. You should go in there. There aren't, many, there aren't many delis like that left in Brooklyn. I know. Those paintings are a fortune. Yeah, and the delis. Was the delis the, great. The, the corned beef sandwich like that. He is delivers to us. He delivers to you? Wow. Yeah, right to the house. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Me you like that? <laughs> I like that. What's costo, costo chondritis, just for those that don't know? Quick, quick rundown. Inflammation of the rib cage. Inflammation where the ribs meet the sternum, where the junction is, can get inflamed. And it, it could be quite painful. Some Tell people feel that they're it. having it's a heart attack. Painful. It's like a stabbing uh, sensation. Uh, there are a couple of things that we've done. Uh, Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, Motrin, Aleve, Advil, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> we also have medications now yeah. that can be delivered to that area through either a cream, Voltaren gel, or actually there's a new one, uh, pen, uh, Penicid, uh, Penicid, uh, yeah, I think it's P-E-N-N-A-S-A-I-D. Okay. Uh, it's also now approved by the FDA oh. for osteoarthritis of the knee, a flector patch. Warm compresses could also help you, by the way. Oh. If these things fail, uh, we even injected these areas with corticosteroids. I've had that done. I've had that done. That's a tricky one. Sometimes somebody comes to the emergency room thinking he's having a heart attack, right, Dr. Muscatel? And then how do you make the, the, the diagnosis, the difference? How do you know if it's heart attack or, or costochondritis? Oh, heart attack... Uh, you can palpate, and uh, usually it's not tender. And the tenderness is at the joint junction where, that Dr. Morano has uh, explained. Very nice. I I'm going for a stress test next week. Uh-oh. Well, why don't you call us back and let us know? Okay. Who okay. should I call? Thanks, Dr. Betty. Garner. Be well. <laughs> Let's go now to Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, how are you? Beautiful. How are you doing? Where are you calling I'm, us from? I'm calling from Sheep Bay, Brooklyn. Oh, one of our favorite neighborhoods. <laughs> I'm trying to think what our... Fa we're getting a dwindling number of places to eat. Oh, no. I, actually, I go out of the area to eat. I go to the Benson Hurst or Park Slope area. What, what do you like in Park Slope? What do I like? I like... Uh, there's a few places um, that we go to brunch an awful lot, and it's right by the hospital. It's right by Methodist Hospital. What, the Sete? I'm sorry? The one, Sete, S-E-T-T-E? -E? Yes, yes. It's a nice place. It's a nice place, good food. The one we down the block, Seta Voce, has a nice outdoor seating. Oh, really? Yeah, try that in the summer. You're going to like that. What's the name of it again? Set, Seta Voce. Sota Voce. Oh. Sota Voce. What does it mean? It means uh, it's, it's whisper almost. But whisper? Sota Voce is under, under, under your breath. But what, it's a great outdoor seating. Oh, I will try that. And, Thank and you. then the one other one that I tried this week, I've got to tell people, um, there's Aqua Grill. It's, it's behind the Brooklyn Academy of Music. Oh, Amazing it's right, place. It's right near them. Yeah, uh -huh. for $25, you get a glass of wine, a fresh fish, um, appetizer, and dessert, and coffee. Oh, interesting. It's, I, I, it's not as crowded as you'd expect. Also, has some outdoor seating. Aqua Grill. I recommend that highly. Tell me you heard it on Ask the Doctor, okay? Oh, I will, definitely. Okay, wh so what can we do for you? My mother was just diagnosed with vertigo. Uh, vertigo. Yeah. She's 82 years old. Very spry, 82. Um, actually, she just... I'm, I'm wondering, is there any medication for this, or is it something, I, I understand that it's something you just learn to live with, is yeah, it true? Yeah. It's a very, it's, I'm going to ask Dr. Muscatella to take a stab at that first, Dr. Moran will have some more to add, but vertigo, such an annoying and such a frustrating thing. It's a very, very, very difficult uh, diagnosis to make. Uh, there's uh, various etiologies, as you know, so you need a, a complete workup and so forth, but uh, uh, in the past, I, I've had all sorts of uh, ENT people uh, see patients with vertigo, and very few they don't have find come anything. Up, uh, and don't come up with too That's much. That's the good thing. It usually turns out not to be serious. Medication-wise, I mean, there's meclizine, right? There's non-drowsy. Meclizine, which is also recur, uh, called antivert. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you can even use it on a cruise if you are, you know, if you have. Uh, 
um, seasickness, mm -hmm. mal, de, oh. mal de mer, they call it in French, right? Oh, I like when you talk French. <laughs> merci, merci. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Italian, though, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, vertigo, it, it, if you have true vertigo, it's uh, dizziness, where that's just that you feel dizzy, the room spins around, and you lose your balance. Well, uh, so a lot of times this is because of an inner ear problem, uh, and that should be investigated by ear, nose, and throat, like my colleague, Dr. Moscatello, suggested. And uh, there is no, one of the major medications is antibiotic, and antibiotic. it's been proven to uh, function. Well, you know, but you have to find out why she has this vertigo. There's well, also a maneuver, went, the epilepsy maneuver. She went maneuver. for a few tests. She went to a neurologist, actually. Neurologist. Yeah, That's all right. And a neurologist ran a few tests on her, um, a couple of scans and a brain scan and so forth and all this stuff, and came up with vertigo. Um, now she's going to rehabilitation. Yeah. Did, you, did they do the maneuver on her? There's little rocks in the canals there, and by moving the head around in different directions, it can yes. actually help to reset them. No, they didn't do that. That can sometimes work. We've seen some success with that. The mm -hmm. Epley maneuver, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. Can you ask about that when you go? Um, oh, I will, definitely. The Epley maneuver. Okay. Okay, may help her. But Thank it's kind you. of frustrating. It's not ser the good thing is it's not life-threatening. The bad thing is it's debilitating at times, and it's frustrating. And I hear well, a lot of commercials now, actually, on the radio talking about vertigo mm -hmm. and how... Um, well, it's just that, you know, when they are older and they're unsteady on their feet to begin with. Yeah, and, and we don't want vertigo, falls. Yeah. You know, it, you, you're concerned. But anyway, I think you're headed in the right direction. Try get that maneuver done, okay? I definitely will. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Hi, Maria. Maria? Uh, there was a rumor that Maria might have the answer to the quiz. Maria? No. Uh, Maria? I don't think we have Maria here, but you can call back Maria if we have the answer. This is a tough one. I didn't think it would be so tough. The second most visited house in the United States. But let's see. Um, we have Betty back again. Hey, Betty? Hello, yes. Are you back? Yes. Betty's back, two times in the same show. Betty, what can we do for you? Hi, Dr. Garner. Yes? Yeah, hi. Uh, I had an x-ray about a year ago, a chest x-ray, and they seemed to see something at the bottom of my lung. Okay. And when you x-rayed me, it was not there anymore. Is there an explanation for that? Interesting. What you can do, and I thought it was Betty from Marine Park. You're, where are you from, Betty? Staten Island. Staten Island. How, how is it out there tonight? Very good. Very good. What, what, what do you love to eat in Staten Island? You have one restaurant you have to go to before you die. Which is the one? Excuse me? Which is the favorite restaurant in Staten Island for you? Uh, Eska's. Ed, Edgar's? Yeah, Eska. Where is that? That's on Richmond Road. What are they, what are they specialized? Uh, Italian food. Italian food. You ever hear that? Edgar's. No. We have to go out there one day. But the thing is what, so there was a little nodule a year ago, a little mark, and nothing this year. Right. Sometimes it could be actually a mark on the skin. That's one of the things that fools us. And then it could be a, a beauty mark or a, or a mole on the skin. It could be a small infection that you had at that time. Okay. Um, it could be what we call a granuloma uh -huh. that doesn't show up because of the technique is different. So there's a number of things. The good thing is if it's not there, it, it tends to mean that it's not dangerous. If oh. it grows, then we get worried about it. So the oh, fact okay, that it disappeared... And the only thing I want to make sure is to actually compare it to your old x-ray to make sure we're not missing a part of the x-ray on this uh, current one. So we need to get that old x-ray. Oh, very okay. Very important. That's very good. Are you new to the show? Uh, well, I've seen it a couple of times. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's great. Oh, very good. Very, I like Upbeat. That's very good. <laughs> I love Dr. Gardner. I love him. The, Thank the you. The staff in the hospital is great. Dr. Chabelle. Oh, Dr. Chabelle is our chief medical officer. He's yes, been on the I show actually, that. too. Very good. Thanks a lot, Betty. Okay, thank you. Be well. Everything's good. That's nice. Nice call. Mm -hmm. We're going to Al Allison. Allison? It's a tough one. Allison? I don't hear any Allison. Is it, is it a different way to spell L-I-S-S-O-N? Well, there's two. One is A-L-L-I-S-O-N, and one is A-L-I-S-O-N. Wow. seem to be having trouble. Let's see. We're going to try now Steve, who has the quiz. Hi, Steve. Hey, how you doing, Doc? Steve, so um, I, there's a rumor around the studio that you might have the answer to the quiz. Yes, I do. All right, take a step back. Okay. Take a nice deep breath. I got it. Drum roll. Okay. The second most visited house in the United States is? Graceland. Absolutely correct. I have to 
I guess they're, they're not that into it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, how, what made you come up with that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know how I got it. It's really a great answer. You see, we had some very bright people tonight that couldn't, couldn't get it. <laughs> couldn't get it. Very impressive. That was good. You never won the plaque before. Oh, no, no, no. This is the first time I ever called. So where are you calling from? I'd like to know where the plaque goes. Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach. Beautiful area. One of my favorite areas in the city. You love to walk on that boardwalk, go to Tatiana? Yeah, well, yeah, I love to walk on the boardwalk. Yeah, Tatiana. Sir. Fish on the beach. Yeah, and the fireworks on Friday night? Yeah. Yeah, it's be Tuesday. Beautiful out there. So we're going to have the, our puzzle master, Linda Lapitosa, now is busy at work. She's going to get your name, inscribe it into the plaque, handmade and imported from Japan. This is not a minor oh, thing. Oh, great, great. You're going to love this. To it. Got a nice hook on the wall. Yep, where, where's it going? Well, it's going to go uh, right on the living room wall. There you go. That, very nice. This is a great answer. Hang on the phone while we get your name, and we're going we're gonna to be set, okay? Okay, great. We have to report it to the IRS due to the value, but don't worry. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Yes. Hey, Bill? Yes? Bill, how you doing? I'm doing well. Nice to hear from you tonight. Where are you calling from? Oh, Staten Island. Beautiful. Do you ever hear that, Edgar's? Excuse me? Betty was just telling us about Edgar's. She loves this place in Staten Island. You ever hear of that? Yes, yes. What do you think? Good, very good. Good. Is that your favorite? Uh, no, I actually, uh, there's, uh, you ever hear a shaper? <laughs> Wait, Dr. Muscatel had a little sneeze. God bless you. Bless what was it? you ever hear a shaper? Schaefer? No, I never heard of that one. Okay, it's, uh, it's like a bar restaurant. They oh, we like that. They have the greatest sandwiches. We're going to go in there one time. We'll give you a call. We'll get together. What's up? What's I have a question for you. Okay. Uh, I've been having problems over the past year. I had different tests. I'm a healthy individual, uh, supposedly according to all my tests, but I had trush. I have dry, dry eyes, a dry mouth, and uh, I was, I'm thinking of uh, possibly being tested for autoimmune. Right, uh, dry eye, dry mouth. Right. The thrush is like a candida or a fungal infection in the mouth. Yeah, uh, that was the first thing that brought me to, uh, you know, to the doctor. Are you diabetic? No. Okay, let's see. Run this by Dr. Yeah. Morano here. Well, zero stomia, zero ophthalmia, which refers to dry eyes, dry mouth, uh, <coughs> can happen as you get older. It's, it's, it's seen a lot also with diabetics, but the autoimmune part, there is a disease called Sjogren's syndrome. Right. Sjogren's syndrome can uh, usually occur with other immune diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis and mm -hmm. lupus. But it also can occur by itself. Uh, so you should be tested for this. Uh, a lot of times with Sjogren's, you can get uh, in enlarged parotid glands. Are your parotid glands on the side here, like where you had the mumps, are they uh, enlarged? No, but they're always hurting me. Hurt always me. hurting you. Oh, uh, yeah, ah. definitely. As a matter of fact, I went to the dentist, and he, he wanted... He wanted to give me a, a mouth guard because my jaws were hurting. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so you might, you might be developing a, a, an inflammation in your parotid glands that, you know, it could be autoimmune in nature. So you need to see a rheumatologist for this. You first should have seen the ear, nose, and throat to see what they could find. And they sometimes could do a biopsy, a lip biopsy, mm -hmm. and they could tell whether you have Sjogren's or not. But there's also other tests that we use. Uh, we use. And if you do have this disease, we have to figure out why. And there are, other, uh, there are medications that can be used. In the meantime, always use an eye lubricant, you know, over the counter, as well as keep water uh, next to the bed at night. And see a rheumatologist. But I, I'm always, uh, I, I, I just started to have problems. I tried to use the, uh, the eye drops in my eyes and it flared up my eyes. Again, you definitely need to be examined and looked at right. uh, from a, uh, ear, nose, and throat, possible ophthalmologist, and definitely a rheumatologist. If you need any referrals, you give us a call tomorrow, okay? Okay. Okay, Good take luck. care. We're now going to Myra. Hi, Myra. Hi, how are you? Hi, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from the Brownsville section of Brooklyn. We spoke to you last week, no? Yes, I had the vertigo, which I still have, but that's not my question. But you see the way we had another caller today with vertigo? Yes, I was listening, highly listening. Yeah, I think yes. that we, we're dealing with also with the season, with the pollen, the allergies, that the fluid in the canals that sometimes gets messed up, so to speak, in scientific language. Oh, and okay. it, it can cause a lot of this, but what, how are you doing? I don't feel so good tonight. Oh. I feel a little nauseous, and I feel a little temperature-wise hot, but I went to the doctor, and he did blood work and whatnot, and the only thing that came back was my 
um, vitamin D. I had a vitamin D shortage. Uh -huh. So are there symptoms that come with vit with with a low vitamin D? Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. Vitamin D, we, we, it's interesting. It, it's like the, 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 the recent Vogue <laughs> test. Yeah, vitamin everybody's D. Vitamin everybody's D levels. Vitamin D levels. Vitamin D levels. Yeah. And we're finding that, uh, surprisingly, or not, you know, maybe we should be surprised, because we never test, really tested for this on a regular basis, uh, that a lot of people have low vitamin Ds. And vitamin D, as you know, or you might not know, a lot of it comes from activation of vitamin D in your skin from the sun. So you oh. need, you know, about... 15 minutes of sunlight a day. But as you oh, get older, okay. you also lack vitamin D, in, and it, it contributes to you not having adequate calcium levels absorbed from your intestine when you have low oh. vitamin D, and contributes okay. to osteoporosis. And you need a calcium and vit the vitamin D to get the calcium into you in order to prevent osteoporosis. So when you found the low vitamin D level, some people can have aches and pains, more like myalgia, <laughs> aches of the muscles, uh, uh, arthralgia, aches of the joints, but you, there's not, it's not a true arthritis. So, so how, many, how much vitamin D should Myra be taking? Vitamin D uh, recommended now is 800 international units a day. Oh. And if it's low, sometimes we give uh, 50,000 international units a week uh, oh, in order wow. to bring you up to a level close to 30. Uh -huh. uh, 20 is the norm. If you're under 20, we consider that low, obviously. Uh, 20 is also considered low normal, but we like to keep you around 30. Oh, so, Myra, okay. sounds like we may, you know, let's take and see how you do. Yeah, I'm going to. So, so I should get um, the vitamin D pills because I drink enough milk and I eat cheese. But I'm not getting, yeah, just not, it, I guess for whatever it's reason. I not enough. Let's try those pills that Dr. Morano was talking about. And why don't we, you know, you repeat the test in what, a couple of months? Yeah, a couple of months to see if it's uh, adequate, and then you can uh, 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 decrease on the high dose of vitamin D. But you should be on 800 international units of vitamin D a day. Myra, still no okay. restaurants out there, huh? Nah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll work. We've got to do something. We're the, we're well, I'm the thinking about it. County. <laughs> All right. All right, All right thank you. Sounds like a nice All lady. Right. Yeah, Myra's nice. Got a little laugh. It's good, right? Dr. Muscatel is his laugh Absolutely. just the best medicine. Absolutely. The system's better, right? Absolutely. I can feel it from here. <laughs> Ron's been holding on patiently. Ron? Hello, Dr. Gardner. Ron, great to hear from you. Where are you calling us from? Uh, Queens Village. Queens Village. You bet on the Derby this week? No, I haven't. No. My daughter, Eve, won $750. God, she had the exact oh, rest is listening. But, uh, <laughs> tell, tell her to don't go to Empire with it. Right. Uh, so how you hey, doing? I got a guest for you on the house. You got a, a guest? Where? I, say that again. It sounded good. I want a guest on a house. Oh. The second best, the second most visited house? Yes. What is it? The second most visited house? Yes. Ron? No drum roll. No, well, we're wrong because we already had the answer. Yes. It's kind of anticlimactic. But what do you think the answer is? You did. Somebody told you Graceland. Yeah. Yeah, somebody told us Graceland. What do they say? A dollar short a day late? Yeah, somebody called the Graceland. Ron? Well, send me the second prize. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the second prize is two plaques. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, Ron? Ron? Graceland. See, there's a How little a delay when I talk to Ron. I see pick up a little delay. Ron? Yes, sir. Yes. Tell me, any, anything else we can do? Yes. Yes. Uh, the rheumatologist, doctor. Right next to me. I'm on... I'm on this medication. Which I'm is on it? this uh, gabapentin. I can't even say what this stuff you're is. On. You're on gabapentin. Gabapentin. What? I can't even say what this Run. Run. This right. is why you, this why you don't want this. This is medicine making you slow. Diclanofenic. Diclanofenic? I can't make What's the out question? Out. Just, if you can give us a question, because we only have one minute left. Ron, I went to. You well, I'm on these two pain medications. I've been diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid arthritis okay. in my body. Okay, we need a one minute answer on rheumatoid medications. There are what we call disease modifying drugs in rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, they could be uh, placonal, as we mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, methotrexate, which is another chemotherapy type of drug. Uh, and then they have the tumor necrosis factors. Uh, Remicade is one, uh, Umera is another, 
Uh, there's a new one, Symponi, Chin, uh, Chinzia, uh, and Embril. And then we have uh, uh, Rituxin and we have Orencia. So those are the medications that are used for rheumatoid arthritis. They demodify the disease. They try to induce a remission of your disease uh, and then maintain it. Uh, and then we also have prednisone. We also use a number of medications for uh, pain. And that could be anything from uh, Tylenol to uh, Percocet. So, Ron, I'm sorry we had to cut you short, but we'll come back to it next week, all right? Come on. What is this stuff supposed to do for me? Well, it's going to take the pain away, allow you to have better function. I don't know what medicine it is. But we don't know exactly what it is. What, can you send it in via the computer, and we'll answer you? Just write it down, because we're not quite sure well, you what you're saying. Well, you said what it was. Uh, the the, the gabapentin. Ga, 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 you know, gabapentin. That's neurontin. Oh, neurontin okay. is used for uh, usually neurologic pain. Uh, but it also be used for seizures, used for uh, a number of uh, other conditions. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ron. Helena, we got the last Helena. I'm here, Doc. How are you, Helena? Where are you calling us from? I'm good. From Queens, New York. Which part of Queens? Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica. I used to work out at the hospital, one of my hospitals out there, Mary Immaculate, no, no longer oh, there. But it's closed now. Closed up. Oh, it's yeah. a shame, right? Yes. What can we do? I got a quick... Only a yeah, okay. I was using Cozer because I'm diabetic to protect my kidneys. And now the pharmacist, she gave me the generic, which is L-O-S-A-R-T-A-N, potassium. Mm -hmm. But why? Um, she said, my insurance man, not want to pay for Cozer anymore. Okay. Can I ask my doctor to... Let them know I do. I should take the Cozer. It should be no problem. It should be the generic equivalent of the medic. Dr. Um, what, we were talking no about. We were yeah. talking about generics being as good, saving yeah. money. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the, the generic is just as good. It should be just as good. We're not quite oh. sure what you're saying. Dr. Uh, Muscatel, you have an opinion on that? Well, what's the exact question? I, she's well, she had a she said, keep the kidneys functioning. She's diabetic. They give her medication. We're not right. quite sure what she said. And the doctor, or the pharmacist said, we can't give you that brand name, but we'll give you a generic because it doesn't fit on your plan. But as long as it's a, gene a generic for the same medication that she's taking, it shouldn't be a problem. She shouldn't worry. Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay, okay. thanks. Not thanks, to yeah. worry. Bye -bye. But I can't believe, thank you so much. We'll talk to you next week. I can't believe where this show flew by. I don't know what happened. Um, amazing. I want to thank Dr. Morano thank for you. coming in. And a thank special you. hundred <laughs> thanks to Dr. Muscatel, who came in after a four-mile walk. And... Um, it's amazing, amazing. And it's always good to remember to be proactive about your health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or third opinions. In the meantime, continue to watch the net and visit the website netny.net slash doctor. You can submit your questions on the forum or watch past episodes. And for those who like to tweet, follow us at twitter.com slash netnewyork. I want to thank you for your calls tonight. I also want to thank Linda Lapitosa for the quiz. And next week, we're not going to be here. It's a special coverage of Pope Benedict's in Fatima. We'll be back in two weeks, though, where we'll be discussing radiology, geriatric medicine, and urology. And that's going to be the finale for this season, the 11th season. It's a shortened season, but don't miss it. It's got a lot of surprises. Until then, say goodbye, stay well, and I'll see you guys in the tablet. Take care.